Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called, What Time Is It? I've recently heard the Lord speaking to me on this matter. I hear a lot of Christians today tell me that they are bored. When I ask them, how are they doing? How's everything? They say, I'm bored. And I realize the reason why they say they're bored is because they're in the flesh. See, when you're in the flesh, we become hypersensitive to the reality of time. We become hypersensitive to the natural things that are going around us. And a few minutes could seem like a few years when we are in the flesh. However, the opposite is true when we are operating in the spirit and the gifts of God. A few years can feel like a few minutes because when we are in the spirit of God, we are actually tapping into another realm. When we are in the spirit of God, we are in another reality and we are actually operating in eternity. That's why sometimes a preacher can preach for three hours and it only feels like to him it was three minutes. But yet for the congregation who may not be in the spirit with him, the three hours can feel like three years. Because when we're in the spirit, we are actually unconscious of time. When we are in the flesh, we are hyper-conscious of time. I believe if you heard of the saying deja vu, deja vu, I believe is evidence of the spirit realm. You go into a realm and you see things that you've never seen before in reality, but something about you feels like you've done it before, or you've lived it before. I believe that is a, an event where you're actually entering into eternity. That's evidence of it. See, when you are operating in the spirit or in eternity, the past is the present and the future is the present. They all three are one. That's why God is not subject to time because he is spirit and he only operates in spirit, not in flesh, except for that he'll be living inside of us. But if he's living inside of us, we are no longer conscious of time and therefore we cannot be bored when we are in the spirit so i want to encourage you to ask yourself why is it that you are bored do you need an abundance of technology to appease your soul do you need an abundance of technology so that you are not bored because if that is true you need to ask yourself why is that true and i'm not beating down technology i'm not going to say that a cell phone and the internet and uh uh, computers of the devil because that would make me the biggest hypocrite because I use just as much technology as you I do believe that we need to take technology and have control of it not have technology have control of us we need to use fasting we need to use control and moderation of tools that God has allowed us to use At least the devil would take advantage of us Second Peter chapter three, verse eight says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as a one day. The next Bible verse that I would like to read is Esther chapter four, verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But if thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is what I want to encourage you with. your job that you have, your authority that you have, your position and your place that you have in this world is not so that you could be selfish and greedy and brag about how wonderful you are and how great God is to you. 
No, the reason why God has you in the position that you're in is so that you can be a servant of God, so that you could obey God. We don't have time to waste. This is not a time to hold your peace and embrace your job for a form of security because if you do that, God will destroy you and your family and take what you have from underneath you and you will lose your job because of God and on top of that, God will replace you and use someone else to do the exact same assignment that God gave to you to do. And you know when God tells you to do something, he'll speak to your heart. And if you don't obey the voice of the Lord, you won't have no peace. You will feel like everything that you're doing is resisting you. No, it's not that everything is resisting you. It's that you are resisting the spirit of God. So don't resist the spirit of God. Operate in the spirit of God and follow peace. And repeat what God tells you to do and don't try to analyze it. Don't try to figure out the result of what's going to happen when you warn those in the position and place that you're in. See, Esther was put in a position and a place in that time and that day and age to be an oracle of God. And it even risked her own life to be able to speak the truth of God. Are you able to risk your job to be able to speak the truth of God? Or are you more scared about keeping your job than obeying God? Don't hold back. This time right now is a special time that we're in. We know that we're in the last days. We can't go back to the future. We can't go back to the past. We could only live in the present and operate and obey God right now. The last Bible verse that I want to read is this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For he said, I have heard these, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in a day of salvation, I have scored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I want to encourage you to encourage other people to get right with Jesus. And we can warn them not out of condemnation, but out of love. And don't be passive about it. You need to boldly speak the truth. And some of us are not boldly speaking the truth because we know we're not right. If we're not right, we need to repent. We need to ask God to forgive us so that we can go back out into the battlefield and preach the truth of Jesus Christ. And that is if people do not have the blood of Jesus over their sins, they are on their way to hell. And you need to take advantage of this time and this life that God has given you so that you can warn other people who God has put in your life for a reason. Number seven ministries, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed.